Welcome back to the video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you a full beginner's walkthrough of how to use the Samsung Galaxy A15 for beginners. We're gonna show you how to navigate the phone, how to get to all the menus, how to get to your settings, um, how to understand how to turn it off, how to turn it on. Um, then I'll move into how to sign to your emails, how to download apps, all the basic things you would need to know to function this phone. We'll also go into how to make calls and how to send text messages. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. So the left side of the phone will start here. You're gonna find your SIM card tray and also your micro SD slot. So if you have a memory card you're trying to put in the phone, you will need to pop out this tray using a paper clip or a SIM pin to be able to put in your uh, micro SD card. Other than that, no other buttons on the left side. On the right side here, you'll find your volume up, volume down, your power pause button, and this button also acts as a fingerprint reader. So uh, you, in the settings, you can program this to be able to unlock the phone simply by putting your finger on this button. At the top of the phone, you won't find anything but just uh, a little speaker hole. At the bottom of the phone, you will find your charging port, which is a type C charging port. If you ever need to buy a replacement charger, you'll need to ask for a type C charging port. And as a quick note, this phone does not come with a wall charger. So I'll have a link in the description for this charger. This is by Anchor. It is a dual charger that will charge the cable from the box, the Type-C to Type-C, and it has a full-size USB as well. So I'll link that in the description in case you need a charger to go with your phone. On the left side here, you'll find your auxiliary port. This is where you'll plug in your headphones. All right. So that's the quick tour of just the outside, the exterior buttons. Now let's talk about how to wake up the phone and how to get into the phone. So on the right side, that power standby button I was telling you about, all you do is tap that button one time to wake up the phone. Whenever you press the button, it puts the phone asleep, but the phone is still on. So press the button once to wake up the screen. You can also tap the screen two times and it should wake up on its own as well. So you've got two different options there. Now, if you want to get into the phone, you'll simply need to put your finger on the screen and drag up. You'll want to drag up quickly and that swipe will basically unlock the phone. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to tap the screen two times to wake it up. Put your finger on the screen and then just simply drag your finger up the screen like this. Let's try it again finger on the screen and just drag up the screen. And that's how you unlock the phone to get into it. Now, right now we do not have a passcode set up on the phone. I will have a separate video coming out, which is called how to set up your Samsung Galaxy A15. In that video, I'll go over how to unlock your phone and how to set a pin and how to set up the fingerprint reader as well. When that video is out, I'll have it linked right at the top of this video right there, okay? So we're in the phone now. Let's talk about how to navigate the screen. Now, first, before I get into that, I want to show you one important thing. You'll notice my screen is going to keep going dim if I don't touch it long enough, which is a little, really frustrating. You see that it just went dim because I'm not touching the screen. So if you want to stop the phone from doing that, you'll want to take your finger, put it at the top of the screen and drag down and you're gonna have a shortcut in the upper right corner to the settings. Tap on the settings wheel. From here, we're gonna swipe up and go to display. And from here, you'll wanna swipe up and go to screen timeout. We wanna tap on this option and change it to five minutes. This way, the screen will not go dim for at least five minutes. You don't have to keep touching the phone every couple of seconds to keep it on. You'll also want to turn on a feature called keep screen on while viewing. This will also keep the screen on because it's going to pay attention to if you're looking at the phone. If you're reading something, for example, the screen will not go dim either. So those are two different ways to keep the screen on just a little bit longer. Let's talk about how to navigate the phone. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor, 
In today's digital world, your online privacy matters more than ever. But with cyber threats lurking around every corner, along with data breaches, how do you ensure your online security? That's where IPVanish comes in. With their cutting edge VPN technology, they empower you to take control of your online security and privacy like never before. Whether you're banking, shopping, or simply browsing, IPVanish keeps your personal information safe from hackers and identity thieves. And it's not just about protecting yourself, it's about protecting your loved ones too. With IPVanish, you can safeguard your entire family's online activities with just one subscription. Go to IPVanish.com slash techmadeeasy to start a risk-free trial to take control of your digital privacy. Don't leave your online security to chance anymore. IPVanish is your shield of protection in today's growing and evolving digital world. You have three buttons at the bottom of the screen. You have a recent apps button, a home button, and a back button. And these are the three main buttons you'll use to navigate your screen. Now, the screen we're on now is called the home screen. So if I ever swipe away, or if I ever tap on one of these little icons here, they're gonna take me into uh, apps. Now an app is simply short for application. Think of it like how computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. Whenever you go into one of these apps, it takes you away from the home screen. So if you want to get back to the home screen, all you've got to do is hit this little circle button at the bottom, and this will take you back to the home screen. No matter what you're doing, this button takes you back to your home screen. If I were to go to the phone app, and I want to go back to the home screen, what do I do? I tap the home button. So just know this always takes you back to this screen. Now, next you have to the left, you have what is called the recent apps button right here. So if I were to tap on the recent apps, this button is gonna show me any app that I've used recently. So for example, I just opened up the phone app and guess what, it's still open. If I swipe over, you'll see Google Chrome is also open because I just opened that program. Now, if you wanna get back to that program because you wanna to continue to use it, all you do is just tap on it and it's gonna take you right back into that program and you can continue whatever it is you were doing, okay? But if I hit this button and I come to this screen, maybe I'm finished using Google Chrome and I wanna close it out so the phone is not using a lot of extra memory in the background, I'm going to basically swipe up the screen like this and that's gonna close out that program. It's no longer running in the background. The same goes for this uh, call screen. If I wanna get rid of this, I'm gonna simply just swipe up and it's gonna go away. So that's a quick rundown of what the recent apps button does. It simply just takes you to this screen to look at all the apps you recently had open and allow you to either go back continue to interact with them or to close them. Now, you can also tap this close all button right here, and this will close all the apps from running in the background altogether. And this uh, step is good to do because it will speed up your phone and allow it to go a little bit faster. Okay, we've gone over our home button. We've gone over the recent apps button. Next, let's go over our back button. Now this button simply takes us back one step. So I'm gonna go back to the settings. Remember, we started at the top of the screen. We swiped or we dragged down the screen to bring up this menu here. We're gonna tap on this little settings wheel. Now, guess what? I'm in the settings wheel right now. And guess what? Maybe I go back to display because I wanna change how long the screen is staying on. So let's say we go back to this menu here. I make my change. And now I wanna go back one screen in the settings. All I need to do is hit the back button, okay? Next, we're gonna hit the back button again if you wanna to continue to go back one screen. Now you'll notice in the upper left corner there is uh, a back arrow. This also does the same thing, but um, this one is a bit easier to reach, okay? So this button just takes you back one step or one menu and once it takes you back as far as you can go, it's gonna take you out of the app and back to the home screen, all right? So that's a quick rundown of what these three buttons do. Home button, 
recent apps button, and back button. If the video so far has been helpful and taught you some new information, make sure you hit that like button down below. That'll help this video to reach more people and therefore be able to educate more people. Now let's continue. So we've gone over navigating the phone using these three buttons. Next, we're gonna talk about this menu at the top of the screen. I've already had you put your finger at the top of the screen and drag down. And now let's talk about what is this menu exactly? Well, this menu is known as the notification panel. Now this section is where you'll get, um, you'll get notifications that are gonna pop up all down this screen here. For example, if you get a text message, if you get an email, if you get uh, a Facebook message, they're all gonna show up in this section here and you'll have a chance to be able to tap on the notifications to go right to that app and interact with those messages. So that's really what happens in this section. As you notice right now, it says we have no notifications, which is no problem. But as the notifications come through, this is where they will all begin to show up, okay? Now, you have a few other things. You also have um, this uh, brightness meter that would allow you to control how bright, right? or how dim your screen is. If your screen is too bright, this will allow you to bring the brightness down a bit to maybe make it easier on your eyes. So you can simply control that by dragging this bar up and down just like that. Now these are simply settings switches that control different functions on the phone. For example, if you wanna to connect to your home Wi-Fi network or someone else's Wi-Fi network or a Starbucks Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter, First of all, this needs to be lit up. If you notice, the little switch is white and that's telling you that it's lit up, whereas this switch is not white. It's uh, kind of blurred out. And that's what tells you that airplane mode is turned off and our flashlight is turned off. Anything that is lit up bright means that it is enabled. And if it's dim, it means it's not enabled. Now, if I wanna connect to a Wi-Fi network, all I have to do is take my finger and I'm just gonna put it right on this icon hold down for one second, and that's gonna bring up our Wi-Fi menu. This will now show me all the available Wi-Fi networks I can connect to, and it will show me, obviously right now, I'm connected to a network, so it's showing me I'm currently on this network, okay? So let's say you're at a Starbucks and you wanna to connect to their public network. You would follow the step I just showed you, and then look for the menu option that says Starbucks. You would then tap on it, just like this, and then it would ask you to enter the password of the network. Now, uh, Wi-Fi passwords are always case sensitive, so you always wanna ask, are there any uppercase letters or any lowercase letters, because that will also affect uh, connecting. That's how you connect to Wi-Fi, super easy. Now, you also have a Bluetooth icon. If we hold down on the Bluetooth icon, it'll take us to the menu, and guess what? I can now go through and if I have a speaker, for example, I'm trying to pair to, I'm gonna put my speaker in the pairing mode and you'll wanna look through your, your instruction manual for the speaker and say, hey, how do I pair this? Normally you turn it on, you hold a button, it's gonna pair, and then you look for that device in the menu here, and when you tap on it, it will allow you to connect to that device. So that's how you interact with your Bluetooth. Now this button is your volume control button. Now if you want to control the sound of the phone, for example, you're going into a meeting and you don't want your phone to ring loud, you'll want to tap on this icon and the, you'll notice the picture will change. There's a slash over the speaker and that's what tells you that now you are on vibrate. Now if you press it again, it's gonna change it and now it's dim. When that speaker is dim, that means that your sound is turned off. Your phone is not gonna vibrate and it's not gonna ring when someone calls. It's also not gonna make a noise when someone sends you a text message. So um, to turn the sound back on, simply tap on that button again, it'll make a noise and you'll be able to see the speaker and that's how you know your sound is fully back on and ready to go. Now, if we tap on our volume button on the right here, it's gonna bring up our volume menu. Tap on these three dots here. These will show you all of the volume controls for the phone. And let's, it goes away quickly, so we have to kind of move fast with this one. 
Now guess what? This is the music volume, so I want to turn that one up a little bit louder. This is the uh, just phone settings menu volume. This is the ringer when someone sends you a call or makes a call, excuse me, when someone calls you or sends a text message. And this is your menu sound as well. So you have uh, four different volume control options that control how sound comes through the phone. If you ever are, you know, feel like your phone should be louder, you'll want to remember hit that volume button, tap on the three dots, and make sure all your volumes are turned up properly. So that's the uh, uh, volume right there. And then you have a flashlight all the way in the corner. If you turn this on, guess what? It's going to use your phone flash as a flashlight. Now, those are just a couple of the options you have in the uh, menu here. Now, guess what? If you swipe down a second time, it will bring up more options. And you have a bunch of other really cool shortcuts to settings uh, menu features. You can also swipe left to get to additional menu options as well. And that, in short, is the notification panel. Okay, let's move into the next section. Let's talk about apps, okay? So I talked briefly about apps earlier. Remember, apps is short for applications. Think of how computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. So. To get to all the apps that are on your phone, you'll simply need to swipe up on the home screen. This will take you to your app screen, and this is where you'll find all the apps that are on the phone. You'll have these little folders as well. So this is your Google folder. It has all the Google apps. This is your Microsoft folder. This is your Samsung folder. So you'll have some apps that will be in these folders. And if you swipe over, you'll have a couple of pages of apps. Okay, so this is what comes installed on the phone when you first set it up. But obviously you can download more apps for the phone. And to do that, you go to this icon, which is called the Play Store. The Play Store is your one-stop shop for everything you would need um, to download. So applications, games, um, if you needed to buy a book, um, all that happens within this app right here. Now, um, you should have already signed into a Google account before setting up the phone. So tapping on that Play Store button should have taken you to this screen. However, if when you tapped on that uh, white button, it did not take you to this screen, if it took you to a white screen and it's asking you to sign to a Google account, just know you will need to sign to a Google account before you can get to this screen or you'll need to create one. You should have a button at the bottom left corner of your screen that says create account. You can tap that if you don't have a Gmail or if you've forgotten the password to your Gmail and you don't have access to it anymore. So just know you will need to sign in to a Google account before getting to this screen. Now, let me give you a quick tour of the Play Store and how to navigate this screen here. So. The most important things to pay attention to are at the top of the screen, you have a search bar. And by tapping where it says search apps, this is where you can bring up a keyboard and you can basically search for a specific app. Maybe, for example, you're trying to download the Uber app so you can get a ride somewhere. Well, you can either type in Uber and then hit the magnifying glass in the bottom left corner of your keyboard to search for the Uber app or there's another easy way to do this. You can simply tap on the microphone in the upper right corner and you can use a uh, voice to text and just say Uber and it will search for that app for you just like this. Uber. Now this will basically, it'll type whatever you say and then it will do a search for you. And so guess what? Here is the Uber app. Now, I can tap on the Uber app first and I can look at some pictures of the app, right? Because also you may be trying to download a game or download something else. This is your way to look through and see what it's supposed to look like first. Let's use our back button to go back one screen. And once you feel good about, hey, this is the app I want, I'm going to tap on this little blue install button. And now we're going to start downloading the Uber app to the phone. Now, notice 
for this app, there was a little button that said install, right? You're not going to always see that button say install. Some of the apps are not free. Some of them are paid. So if it's ever an app that costs money, instead of it saying install, it will have a price. If you see a price, just make sure you're aware that if you tap on that price, it's going to charge you for that app. It's going to ask you to add a credit card to your Google account so that it can charge you for that app. So just make sure you don't buy anything unless you're for sure that is what you want to download. Now, Uber is uh, downloaded. It was pretty fast. So now I can either tap on the open button here to take me right into the Uber app, or I could hit my home button and then I can swipe up and this will take us to our, our app menu and then I can swipe to the left and there's my Uber app. You can always find your Uber app in this section on this page. Once again, on the home screen, swipe up and it's either on this page or this page. I'm gonna then tap on Uber and now I'm in the app and I'm ready to start using it to try to find a ride. So that's a quick rundown of how to download an app. Now I'm gonna go back to the Play Store and show you a few more things to pay attention to. Let's use our back button on the right here to go back one page. Let's press it one more time to go back one page. And guess what? Now we're finally back to the main page of the Google Play Store. So sometimes you will know exactly what it is you're trying to download or search for, and sometimes you won't. Now, if you're not sure, maybe you're just trying to find a new game or you're just trying to see what apps are available. In that case, you'll want to um, search through a few of these menu options here. So two things. First of all, at the bottom of the screen, you have a game section and you have an app section. So obviously games are games and they're really just how to find different fun things to do on the phone. You'll have these different pages here. So you have the top charts, basically most popular games. You have games for kids. You have games that are new to the store. You have all these options you can scroll through or you can simply go over to category and look for, hey, I want a game that is a casino game. Maybe you want video poker. Well, then it'll take you to only games that fall under that category. Let's hit our back button. Now, maybe you don't want a game. Maybe you're trying to find an app to help you keep better notes on your phone. Well, you want to tap on apps first. And then same thing at this top little menu here, tap on top charts, kids, and categories. And this will help you to go through and say, you know what, I'm looking for an app that is more so about productivity. So you may want to go down to the productivity section here. And then here you'll find apps that are specifically geared towards productivity. So that's sort of how you navigate the, the store and how you can just see different options. There are, are I want to say, over 2 million apps that are in the store. So that's why they have all these different categories and pages because there's so much information to display. This helps you sift through and get right to the important information. Now, let's go ahead and hit our home button and that's gonna take us out of the Play Store. If the video has been helpful so far, don't forget to hit that like button down below. In this section, I'll be going over how to make calls and how to answer the phone when someone is calling you. So let's start with when a call is coming through, how you answer the phone. I'm gonna initiate a call. Okay, so the call is coming through. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to put it on the uh, green phone button and drag up. That is how you answer the phone. Now, if you want to put the phone on speakerphone, obviously tap speaker. You've got mute. You have uh, the plus here if you'd like to add someone else to the call. And you have your keypad dialer here in case you're calling an automated system and you need to specifically uh, uh, enter a, a key command. When you're all finished with the call, tap the red button to end the call. Now the same thing goes if you are, um, if you want to decline the call. So if a call is coming through and you don't want to answer it, you can obviously just not touch anything, but you can also take your finger, put it on the red button and you're going to put it on the button and then drag up 
and that's going to decline the call. So it's gonna automatically go to voicemail and the person can leave you a message. Next, let's go over how to initiate a call. We're gonna tap on this green call button in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to tap on the keypad button and I'm gonna enter a phone number starting with the area code 323-853-1212 and tap the green button to start the call. And let's put it on speaker here. The time and temperature is coming up. There we go. This. It'll connect, you can talk. When you're all done, you'll tap the red button to end the call. So just that easy, you can initiate a call. To the left of the call button is going to be your messages button. If you tap on that, this is the text message section. And if you'd like to send someone a message, you're going to tap on the bubble in the bottom right corner. And then you will uh, see a keyboard pop up and you can type in the person's name if they're already saved in your phone or you can uh, enter just the phone number. Now a quick shortcut, if you tap on this button here, this is your dialer or your keypad, it will switch it to make it easier for you to input just a phone number. Let's put that same number in and then we'll hit done. So now we've basically set it up so we're gonna text that number. Our keyboard has come up, we're now in the text message section at the bottom here and I can now enter a message. Hi there. And when I'm ready to send it, I can tap on the button here, which is the send button. Now here's a few more things you can do in terms of sending text messages. You have an emoji button here. This will bring up your uh, emojis. You can send someone a picture. For example, if someone says, you know, goodbye, you can send uh, a wave like this and hit the send button. And now you've just sent someone a wave emoji. If I tap on the button here, this will allow me to attach a picture to the email. So you'll have two options. You'll have a camera option, which is, hey, let's take a picture right now. I'm gonna just hold it up and tap on the white circle. That's gonna take a picture that I can attach immediately to the text message, or I can go to my gallery right here and look at what pictures are saved on the phone. Let's say I wanna send this picture, I'm gonna tap on it, tap on add, and now I've attached two pictures to this text message, and I'm gonna hit this button to send it. Now, that's not all. There's a few more things you can do as well. If you tap on the plus all the way to the left, you can look for a GIF if you'd like to send them one of those funny animated pictures. You can also send stickers. You can attach different types of files, not pictures, but maybe like a document. You can send your location in case you're trying to show someone how to find you. You can attach a contact or you can even schedule a message to be sent later by selecting here. You also have uh, two microphones on the screen. One is here and one is here. The, key, the microphone at the bottom here will allow you to say what you want your message to say and it will type it for you. It will dictate it. So watch this. Tap on the microphone. Let's hit skip. Tap while using. Agree. It's now going to make you press it again. Good morning, I hope you're feeling well today. And basically, it just typed out everything I said into the message, and all I have to do is hit the send button to send out that message. Now, this microphone is a different option. This is if you'd like to send someone a voice message, you can tap here and um, basically say a verbal message and have that sent to them. But you'll need to take your finger and hold down on the button. It will record as long as you're holding down on the button and then it will stop recording once you lift your finger like this. Good morning, I hope you're feeling well today. 
So it just created a three second voice message that I can now send in the message. So these are just a few of the things you can do. Now let's talk about how to set up your email on the phone. Now you'll want to tap on the Google icon on the home screen. There's this little Google folder and tap on Gmail. Now some of you might say, I don't have a Gmail. I have a Yahoo. I have an SBC Global. I have a Verizon.net. Well, guess what? You can use the Google app to sign into just about any email account. Most people don't know this. In the upper right corner of the Google app, you'll tap on this little icon and you'll come down to add another account. And this will allow you to add a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth email account right to the Google app. Now, if it's a Gmail, you'll simply tap on Google. If it's an Outlook, Hotmail, or Live, you tap here. If it's Yahoo, you tap here. If it's an Exchange or Office 360, you tap here. Now, the other option is right here. This one can be a bit tricky. It is not always the easiest to navigate. So if you don't see your email type in one of these four options, here's what I would recommend you to do. Hit the home button, go to the Play Store, and you'll want it to hit the back button, get all the way back to the main screen, which is here. And you're gonna tap on that little search box where it says search apps. And you'll wanna type in the back half of your email address. For example, if you hit in the bottom left corner, this button here, tap on the at symbol. I'm just gonna tap in AOL.com. And then I'm gonna tap the magnifying glass to the right to do a search. And this will give me apps that specifically work with AOL email addresses. So guess what? I can go to uh, AOL, tap install, and now I can use the AOL Direct app to sign into my AOL email address. Now, let's hit the magnifying glass again. This time I'm gonna tap at sbcglobal.net. And I'm going to do a search. And these are all the apps that are gonna be compatible with that email type. So this is a trick that's gonna help you identify a better app to help you sign into whatever email type or email account you're trying to use. Okay, now let's go back to the Gmail app really quickly here. Now, again, I'm, I'm already signed into one email account right now. If you end up signing in to multiple email accounts, if you wanna switch back and forth between the accounts, you simply tap on this little circle in the upper right corner. And so right here, I have my first email type. And as you sign into more, you'll see them stacked underneath each other. You would simply tap on the email underneath this one to jump to that account. And that's how you easily can jump to your different email types. On my personal phone, I have over 10 email accounts signed in right now. And it's very easy to navigate because I just tap on that icon in the upper right corner and I just jump between the accounts. You'll also get separate notifications from the different email accounts as well. So that's a quick rundown of how to sign to your email accounts and how to get to them. Next, I wanna go over how to make the text size larger to make it easier to read things on the phone. So we're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, we're gonna tap on the settings wheel. Now next, we're gonna swipe up and go back to display. From here, swipe up and go to font, size, and style. You have a few different things you'll wanna control. First is the font size. If I just tick up, it's gonna show me a preview here and you'll also see how the menu buttons are gonna get larger, just like this. Feel free to keep adjusting until you get a comfortable size. You can also then hit the home button to actually see how everything looks different. You'll notice all my uh, text under my apps are now bigger. When I swipe down from the top, some of these menus should be larger as well. Let's hit our recent apps button to go back to the settings. Now, 
you know, maybe go all the way to the biggest size and then work your way back down until you feel you've gotten to a comfortable size. Next, you'll want to tap on bold font. This is another way. It'll make all the text bold and it'll pop a bit more. That'll help as well. You can test this out by going to the Google Chrome app. Now, Chrome is the web browser. This is going to the internet. So you can then see how much larger everything looks based on how you changed it and hit recent apps to go back to the settings again and keep tinkering until you find a size that works best for you. You can also decide to change the font style and maybe there's another font style here like this Gothic bold that might show a bit better as well. So these are just a few of the things you can play around with to try to make the text bigger. And again, if I go all the way to the right, you'll see, I mean, this is really big. So um, obviously everyone's eyes are different. So you'll want to keep tinkering with it until you find a size that is most comfortable for you. All right, when you're all done, you can hit your back button and notice how much bigger even the menu text is just from some of those changes. Then we're gonna hit the home button to take us back to the home screen. So that in short is how you change the size of the text. Next, let's go over how to take pictures and just a quick uh, walkthrough of taking pictures, taking videos, and then where to find them after you take them. So first you'll wanna go to this camera button that's in the bottom right corner. And I'm gonna just lift the phone. So when this button in the front is white, that means you're taking a picture. So I'm just gonna point it at my Rubik's Cube here, tap the white button to snap a picture, just like that. Now, if I wanna take a video, I can just simply swipe over, just like this, and that's gonna put me in video mode. Now, guess what? I know I'm in video as well because my button is no longer a solid white. Now it has a red circle in the middle and that is to let you know that tapping this will start recording. So we're taking a video and you'll notice at the top here, it has a count up that's telling you, hey, we're recording a video. This is how long the video is going for, okay? Now, while you take a video, guess what? You can simply tap on this little button here to snap photos during the video. So that's a super helpful feature there. You can pause the video or simply hit the stop button to stop it from playing. Now those are the two main camera functions. Now you can swipe over and there's some other options. For example, there is a portrait mode. Portrait mode is when you have something in the shot that you want to have all the focus and you want the background to be blurry. Let's see, let's try to take this picture here. If I take this, it's gonna have the flower that's gonna be in full clear view and the whole background is gonna be blurred out. So I'm gonna just tap the button to snap and now I have a nice picture where the flower is in full focus but the background is blurred out. You can also tap this button here to change the different blurry uh, options that are available. So that's just a quick rundown of how to take pictures. Now you'll notice in the left, oh, excuse me. You'll have this button to the right. This button to the right is how you switch to the front camera. If you want to take a selfie, you'll tap on this button. And now we're working off of the front camera, you see. And then same thing, tap the button to take your picture. And one more important thing, this is how you get really great pictures. When you're pointing at something, if you tap on the item, the camera will make sure that it's in even more focus and it will adjust the lighting according to that item. Now maybe I wanna change the lighting in this picture and I want it to adjust more to, to this little wood base. I'm gonna tap on that wood base and you'll notice the lighting is gonna adjust. Now, if I tap on this little item in the back that's dark, it's gonna make it really bright. So simply tapping on different items in the picture, that's how you adjust how the camera responds with the lighting 
and with the focus. Quick pro tip. Now, after you've taken a picture, you can either tap on this little icon on the left. This takes you right to your photo gallery. It'll allow you to see the picture and swipe through other pictures that you've just taken. Maybe you say, oh, I don't like this last one. Tap on the trash can on the bottom right corner to get rid of it. It's going to move it to the trash. Now, maybe you're not in the camera at all. Maybe you just, hey, I just want to see the pictures that I took today at the zoo. Whatever. You'll swipe up on the home screen and look for the gallery icon and then tap on gallery. And this will show you all the pictures you've taken. In the first menu option, it separates it by the date. You can also go over to album and it will separate your pictures by album. Camera, screenshots, favorites, recent. And it also has a cool story mode where it will create different stories based on the pictures you take. So that is the camera section and that's where you'll be able to make your different edits to the pictures as well after you take them. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of our video. Now, don't be sad. Guess what? More videos are to come. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those important videos. Um, I will be creating a tips and tricks video to show you uh, a lot of other really cool features you can use on the phone. I'll also have a video coming out soon called how to set up your Samsung Galaxy A15. And I'll go over some detailed things like how to set a password for your phone, how to set up the fingerprint sensor, transferring data from an old phone to this phone. So stay tuned for that video. Um, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what section was the most helpful for you. I always love to hear your feedback. And just know more videos are to come. I love educating folks on how to use smartphones. And this is the newest phone of the prepaid world for 2024. And I'll have a lot of videos coming out for this phone. So. Thanks again for watching. If you didn't already hit that like button, hit the like button down below and we'll catch you in the next video. Take care and as always, have a good one.